Today, the Fronteras desk will embark on a trip south to Baja, California to report on several issues important to the region, and you will have an opportunity to follow them on their travels through Mexico. Joining me with a pre preview of their journey are reporter Jill Replogel and social media editor Jose Luis Jimenez. Thank you both for being here. Sure. So on this journey, you're going to uh, come across several stories. I know you've been researching the area, and one of them is about the real estate bust in northern Mexico. Jill, tell me more about that. Well, um, they had the same problems that we did, especially because a lot of Americans were investing. Um, you know, a lot of people have seen that area between Tijuana and Ensenada that's just full of high rises. A lot of them are half built. They never got finished. Um, but there's some interesting consequences of the fact that that sort of crashed, um, it's had some positive benefits for the environmental movement, which um, has been able to, to preserve a bunch of coastal land that was under threat of being developed. And so, you know, they're sort of secretly cheering that, that this happened. And also yeah. along the way, I know uh, a lot of our audience, they're, they're familiar with this area in terms of being a great place to go and surf. Um, so you're going to check out the surfing. And what do you expect to find? Well, we're going to this little town way, way, way down there um, called Scorpion Bay, and it's this epic surf town. Apparently, it has a wave that you can surf on for, you know, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. And um, and competing sort of surf investor groups have been trying to develop a portion of the beach that um, is, is the very popular surf break. And so there's a little bit of a, there's not a little bit, there's a big legal battle that's been going on there for a long time between those two groups and between the Ejido, which is the communal land group in Mexico that actually owns the land, or maybe now doesn't own the land because they've sold it, but that's where it gets messy. So we're gonna go check out that whole issue. Now, Jose, I think uh, for a lot of people at home, this is an area that they're, you know, used to traveling to in terms of tourism and spending a couple of nights. Wh why did the Fronteras desk decide that we're going to spend some time, we're going to travel, go a little maybe further south than we're, we're used to? Wh wh why this effort? Well, it started off with Jill coming up with the story idea about the uh, Hilo and, and the issue with surfing. And then we started talking, and as we started talking, we came up with all these other story ideas of issues that are going on on there. For example, the environment. Uh, you know, environmentalists here in San Diego for a long time have understood that what happens in Baja impacts us here in San Diego and in Southern California. So that's how we came up with the idea about the environmental story. And then another story that we're also going to try and pursue down there is the Valle de Guadalupe, which is the winemaking region in Baja California. Probably a lot of our, our, our viewers and, and readers on KPBS.org have been down to that area and explored the wine region. And because of the massive development that has gone on there lately, it is kind of threatening that region because there's a lack of water to, to obviously to irrigate the vineyards to be able to get the wine. Really, as, a, as such a close neighbor to us, we don't really get a lot of coverage coming out of this area, do we? No, and I think, I mean, that's part of the idea as, as well, that um, people still have a lot of fear of going down to Mexico. Um, the violence has dropped you know, significantly in the last few years. And, and actually, there was never a whole lot of violence in southern Baja. And so, yeah, so we want to go kind of, you know, give an update on what's going on. We had the uh, head of tourism from Baja, California, on the show uh, a month or about a month ago. And he, he sort of said the same thing, too. And maybe there's a lot of misinformation in, in terms of the region as well. Yes, actually, you go to people in Ensenada, and they complain about Tijuana that they get all the press, they get the bad press, and because of Tijuana, people don't want to cross, cross through. And they point out things are safe down there in Ensenada. Things are pretty much running as normal. Um, all of the things that you're used to doing down there, you can still do, and you don't, you don't without any fear. You can go sport fishing, you can go surfing, you can just go hiking, whatever you want to do, you can still do it down there. Now, before we go, uh, Jose, I want you to tell the people at home how they can follow you on this road trip. Yes, we are creating a blog to basically chronicling our travels down there. And you can go to the website, fronterastes.org slash Baja Trip. And every day we'll be posting on there. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Fronteras Desk with the hashtag Baja Trip. Well, we'll have to have you both back uh, with your stories once you're, you're back home safe. So thank you so much, Jose Jimenez and uh, Jill Rafogo.